What you are looking at here is the latest radar imagery from the Japan Meteorological Agency of Typhoon Halong right around 10 p.m. Japan Standard Time on the August the 9th. 2014 this storm system still packing some high winds upwards about 70 gusting to about 100 knots just prior to landfall still a very strong typhoon and well the bigger threat really has been the rainfall not just here into the parts of shikoku where thousands of people have been advised to evacuate but over towards my prefecture there into the key peninsula rainfall has been continuing the stream on shore and emergency level warnings have actually issued out here via jma in these areas in the purple across the key peninsula so the rainfall has been continuing to come down and this all comes uh, after last week remember when Nakri came through and after that we had a stationary boundary dominating much of Japan so the grounds already saturated there across parts of western Japan and that is why JMA has stated people really need to take immediate action to prevent the not only damage to their homes but possibly the loss of life if they uh, do, are not smart about this storm system if you are being advised to evacuate if you are putting one of these warning zones anywhere out here definitely want to be taking this very very seriously main reason for all this rainfall today well you have your low pressure center right here coming around the right periphery of the storm system though is all of that moisture we have drier wrapping around the western periphery so if you're over towards fukuoka actually it may have not seemed that bad today but off here towards the key peninsula and into shikoku that rain has really been streaming on shore and to make matters worse Across the, much of this area, we have the mountains out here. That's really acting like a sponge and more so a wall and stopping any precipitation from really making it over these mountains. And that's why some areas out here could see well over five to 600 millimeters of rainfall. So you have all that moisture continuing to stream on shore, really. And especially just inland from Kochi Prefecture over here to, through Tukushima, which is off here towards the east where several thousand people have also been advised to evacuate. That moisture hits these mountains and it starts to flow into these rivers and streams out near the immediate coastal areas actually the shimamoto river which is farther off here towards the west this is where james reynolds is and he has been uh, talking about major flood threats over here and actually shimamoto um, many people have also been advised to evacuate because that moisture continues to hit these mountains and it's going to flow into some of these river banks and basically flow downstream and this city definitely under very severe risk of flooding especially in many of these low-lying coastal areas it's not more it's not coming from the sea i mean that threat of storm surge is definitely here but i think the bigger threat is coming from the mountains as we go ahead not only through the rest of saturday which it's already into the late evening hours when i'm making this but throughout the day on sunday that precipitation is definitely still going to be coming down let's actually take a look at uh, the outlook here not just with the winds but i'll put the precipitation up on your screen and as we go ahead this is starting out through the rest of saturday into sunday morning that rainfall is still going to be wrapping around from the southern periphery of this so the key peninsula in shikoku you're still going to be seeing that precipitation an additional easily four to five hundred millimeters very well as possible out here and finally as we look ahead likely into Saturday afternoon into the evening hours that's what this time frame is you're finally going to see that precipitation really start to ease up but as I as I mentioned a second ago all that rainfall that's building up in these mountains it's going to be still there and all that still has to flow downstream so that flash flood threat is still going to be in place as all that water starts to work its way out towards the coastal areas meanwhile back towards the east into Tokyo I think Sunday is one of these days if you were out in Tokyo Japan um, you probably want to stay indoors and uh, not to make it sound kind of stereotypical, but probably a good day to stay indoors and read a book because it's going to be pretty breezy out there. I don't expect anything destructive, but the rain is really going to be coming down across much of Tokyo, Japan, and even down there through Kanagawa and off towards the west as well. If you are out here, you definitely want to just have an umbrella ready out here back towards the east. So where is the storm system going to be going as we look ahead after Saturday? and into Sunday night. Well, it's actually expected to track off here towards the north out through the Sea of Japan. As far as the Sea of Japan goes, well, it's actually very conducive for supporting tropical systems out here. We do have a high vertical wind shear to take in place, plus the cold sea surface temperatures. You can see right here, this is around 68 to 76 degrees sea surface temperatures once you start to approach far eastern Russia. Yes, we do have some warm pockets there just off the Hokuriku region. I could keep our storm system going, but by the time it really makes it over western Japan. The system is really going to be torn apart by that friction and also we're going to start to see that cooler sea surface temperatures plus the vertical wind shear. Is it still going to be packing tropical storm strength winds? Yes. Is it going to be a full-fledged 
actual tropical characteristic type of storm. I, I, I think time's going to tell on that one. It depends on how strong it maintains that intensity after it pushes over western Japan. But if you are off here into northern portions of Honshu, Hokkaido, and even in the far eastern Russia, I mean, this isn't something you talk about too often, but far eastern Russia, you have a lot of law stock right here could be seeing some tropical storm strength winds as that wind wraps around it's going to hit these coastal areas and even that threat of storm surge farther off there towards the north and that threat of flooding so uh yeah that's something i actually find pretty interesting with this in my uh, over a half a decade forecasting these storm systems i've never seen one maintain some sort of tropical characteristics all the way out through russia usually by the time they get off there they get torn apart by the dredge stream or they get torn apart by the mountains in korea or japan It'll be interesting how that follows up jtwc actually expects it to lose all of its intensity by the time it gets off there through the northern portions of the sea of japan basically to that vertical wind shear threat and also the cooler sea surface temperatures as i mentioned before but as we've been saying throughout the day today the big topic still is this major flood threat for much of western japan shikoku um really you're going to be looking at this flood threat throughout the next uh 24 to 48 hours thousands of people have been evacuated one death has come out of this a 78 year old man who was out in his rice field and he ended up getting swept away by flood waters meanwhile uh at least four to five people have been injured one person actually was a lady she was trying to fix roofing and uh, she ended up getting blown off her roof due to a strong wind gust in the middle of this typhoon over towards Kyushu so uh, this is still a very serious storm system people and we are definitely going to continue to keep you updated as we go ahead through the rest of Saturday and into Sunday out here as always though if any questions comments or suggestions you can always post them down there in the comment box below and as always stay safe out there thanks again for watching